how the latest twist in the X-Men comics reboot could help set up their Marvel Cinematic Universe debut. Oh, the X-Men. It's hard to believe, but there was a time when they were literally the biggest superhero team on the planet. However, over the last decade or two, it's been a bit of a bumpy ride for fans of Marvel's Merry Mutants. Over the years, we've seen live action movies of varying degrees of success and failure, comic reboots that have left readers extremely divided, and questionable crossovers that upended everything that fans loved about the team. And all of this while their superhero colleagues, the Avengers, went from a group of B-list comic book heroes to the biggest movie franchise of all time. Of course, a lot of this had to do with the X-Men movie rights, which had been locked up over at Fox. But now that the House of Mouse has taken control of the mutants as part of the Fox acquisition, it's time for the beloved franchise to shine once again. And what better way than through another comic book reboot? Ha ha! Now, look, we joke, but in all seriousness, the latest comics reboot is definitely making heads turn. On top of Killer art and fantastic designs, the two new miniseries by writer Jonathan Hickman, House of X and Powers of Ten, is throwing out the old playbook and updating the mutants for the new comic book landscape. The book has fans excited, intrigued, but also scratching their heads as to what the hell is going on. And some readers believe that we could be seeing how this latest update, and specifically how one twist, could help introduce mutants into the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Now, keep in mind, this will get a little inside baseball and we will have to lay out a little bit of context to get there. Plus, it will spoil some of the latest issues of X-Men, so bow out now if this is too much for you. Still here? Cool. If you aren't up to date on the most recent X-Men comics, here's your too long didn't read version. The X-Men have created a utopia for mutants on Krakoa, an island that is also alive, and are attempting to save every mutant they can. All of this is happening while we see how mutantdom has fared through time in factors of 10, i.e. year 0, year 10, year 100, and year 1000. We see new faces, we see old faces, and we see twists on a few preconceived notions we had with some characters. Characters. Now, you may think this is pretty standard for an X-Men book, but there's one character change that wrecks everything we thought we knew. That character is Moira McTaggart. In previous iterations, she had always been a human geneticist whose calling had been helping mutants. But in this relaunch, Moira has been retconned to be a mutant. It's now established that Moira has the ability to reset her life to the moment of her birth after she dies with all her memories intact and be invisible to other mutants. It's also revealed that she has been integral for each incarnation of the X-Men and has also steered mutant kind in one direction or the other to test out different outcomes. However, pretty much all the timelines she has changed have led to the disaster of mutants. And in this latest timeline, McTaggart does something she has never done before and shares her memories with Charles Xavier and Magneto. While it's still early to see where this is all going, it has the fans buzzing. So how does this all tie into the MCU, you ask? Good question. Considering Moira's new powers, what if the X-Men and mutants were in the MCU the whole time? Thanks to Avengers Endgame, we know that alternate timelines exist within the MCU, so it's possible that in previous timelines, mutants came to power and were either wiped out or enslaved. Moira, seeing these futures, could have reset her and attempted to course correct the MCU, but failed each time. But now, the MCU as we've seen it is a universe where under the protection of Moira and Xavier, mutants have managed to hide themselves from humanity for fear of being subjugated. And of course, something will happen that will once again reveal mutants to the world, but we probably won't see that until phase five. All of this would take a little retconning on the part of Kevin Feige and company, but as we know, they aren't afraid of retconning a few details here and there, like Peter Parker being the little kid in Iron Man 2, or how the Marvel Studios Visual Dictionary lists the Scarlet Witch's powers as possibly being something that was unlocked inside of her. Yeah, that just screams mutant. In any event, we won't know for sure how they decide to bring the mutants into the MCU until after phase four, but we wouldn't be surprised to see this comic book retcon find its way onto the big screen. Hell, it's not the first time they have made changes in the comics to help suit their theatrical counterparts. Spider-Man's organic web shooters, the X-Men's black leather look, to name a few examples. We'll just have to wait and see how exactly the X-Men comics and their integration plays out. 
But what do you folks think? Do you like the new Moira McTaggart retcon? Which X-Men are you excited to see on the big screen? And who was your favorite X-Men? You know it was Gambit. Let's discuss. Hey, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, why not give us a like and subscribe? If you want to get notified every time we go live with the show or drop a new video, feel free to mash that little bell so you can be up to date on all the latest theories, news, and rumors in the pop culture world.